Hello and welcome to another episode of the MHR podcast. I'm Emma. And I'm Andy. How are you this week, Andy? I'm okay. I'm excited for upcoming celebrations. We do have upcoming celebrations. That's exactly what I want to talk about. So we have a very big week coming up in the MHR calendar next week. It is National Payroll Week. I imagine it's a big week for most people who like to get paid. Well, yeah, isn't yeah. It? with that in mind, actually, I'm, I'm a bit of a personal fan myself. But um, yeah. no, National Payroll Week is something that we celebrate uh, every year. Um, it's a, uh, a celebration recognised by the CIPP uh, to celebrate the payroll profession and give all of the recognition to our payroll yeah. uh, workers that they deserve. As a HR, payroll nice, finance organisation, who makes tech for that world, we're very proud to honour those hard-working we payroll We absolutely people. are. We absolutely are. Um, so this week, I wanted to have a bit of a chat all around payroll. More specifically, okay. uh, the sorts of things that uh, employers and employees can benefit from when it comes to our financial well-being. Okay, um, great. And payroll. So I suppose payroll is always one of the biggest factors contributing towards people's financial well-being, right? We're here to get paid. Absolutely. Uh, if we don't get paid correctly, that impacts our financial well-being exactly and more importantly as well it's it's not just looking at <clears throat> you know things that you can do to improve how your payroll works but also looking at ways in which your employee can benefit and create that added value yeah. um and it's a really big topic at the moment financial well-being it's more than just a buzzword it's actually a very you know important statement around being able to provide um, that reassurance and that security to your teams, to your employees, um, that they will have a steady kind of sense of control and process uh, for their payroll. Good. Um, so there's a few different things that I actually wanted to cover in this. Okay. And I know that there was one of these elements that you have covered before on the podcast, but I think it's really important that we talk about it today. Yeah. Um, which is real-time payroll. It's a big topic, isn't it? It's a big topic. Very, very hot on this here at MHR. Yep. Um, and the second one that we've got is earned wage access. Okay. <clears throat> so this is something that um, we, as a business, are always looking to develop on as well. And I think that it's it's something that's come out in the last few years that is really starting to make kind of groundbreaking changes okay. um, in terms of, being able to better manage so, the financial well-being of so our So earn wage teams. access is going to be very much an upcoming trend, you think, more businesses are going to adopt <coughs> that. So, Absolutely. Because we've had a year probably where we've started talking about real-time payroll, what that means for other organisations, and a lot of businesses have their own approach to that. Yeah. I think we can probably talk about more what that means to us at the moment and, and, and where people are going with it. Mm -hmm. But wage, um, you know, earn wage access, that's different. That's a bit more, it's a bit more interesting. It's, it's taking it to that next level okay. you know it's not just creating that transparency and that visibility but also creating access to that as well which okay. completely changes what we consider the traditional setup of a payroll system okay so before we get into those two topics you've put <coughs> some stats here some very interesting stats mm. in regards to payroll week or the impact of uh, poor payroll on financial well-being mm -hmm. i see shall we go through them yeah so um some of it, initially, actually, some of this is from some of our own research, okay. um, which Very I good. would always recommend to check out. There's some great thought leadership work that we've done over on the MHR global website um, that you can see in our downloads. Um, from our employee experience report, so this was a report that we did towards the back end of last year, it was noted that 47% of employees wish their employee would focus more on financial well-being. Yeah. Um, so pitting that closely alongside kind of mental and emotional well-being, it was up there as one of the top considerations that employees think about when they're going for a position as well. Yeah. Um, so it's something that they will be keen to look for in the recruitment process to ensure that that element is kind of covered off and they okay. feel that that's being looked after. Um, and the reason for that is that 73% of UK employees are worrying more about money. So, you know, again, this is something we've discussed before. We've got the cost of living crisis. We've got significant inflation yeah. in things like energy bills and food yeah. bills. Um, that understandably, 
it's yeah. an ongoing concern, you know. Yeah. Not you know, salaries can't necessarily keep up with the demand right now. Yeah. Um and so it does become a stretch. So much yeah. so um that in a, a recent report it was said that one in ten uh, employees have missed work due to financial problems or financial difficulties. Which only creates more of a problem, doesn't it? Exactly. And so I think it's important for us to look at this from a two pronged approach. So not only what um, employees can benefit from um, by offering them some of these tools and solutions such as real-time payroll mm -hmm. and earned wage access, but also how we as businesses can also benefit from it as yeah. well. So what I've done, and we can just have a bit of an open discussion about this, is looking at what the benefits are either side um, and, yeah, just okay. see, see what we can get from it. Nice. All right. All right, then. So the first one I want to look at is real-time payroll. So um, for those of you not familiar, real-time payroll is effectively the ability to be able to see what you are earning as you are earning it. Right. So traditionally, we go with a payroll at the uh, excuse me, a pay slip at the end of the month. Yeah. And that's where you discover what your you know what your taxes are, what your yeah. overtime has concluded to as well, okay. any expenses, salary sacrifices for pensions, that kind of thing. Okay. What this allows you to do is to get an early view of what your expected earnings will be, what you've earned up until this point, uh, including any overtime as well. So yeah. it's factored in live as you go, so real time. Yeah. Um, and it will also give you easier access into understanding how your tax and your salary so sacrifice it, things will work as well. So obviously, if you're on a, um, say you're on a fixed wage or you're on a fixed kind of routine or schedule or for a week, Mm -hmm. It's very easy probably then to predict what that's going to be. Yeah. But I suppose one of the other advantages for this is if you aren't, if you're very, you know, if you're a shift worker or you mm -hmm. have varying shift patterns, um, this is great because it helps make, it helps allow you to make more informed decisions about what time or what, you know, what the contribution, if it's ever changing every month, you're, you're yeah. doing into your own financial situation, especially if you haven't got a fixed kind of kind of wage packet every month. No, exactly. Yeah. And it, it allows you to have that preparedness as well. So if yeah. <clears throat> if you know that you're in a situation whereby you need to accrue some more money, yeah. you can see where you're up to and you can make that request for overtime or request yeah. for some changes to, to make that happen. Okay. It, it gives that ultimate kind of financial control whereby yeah. you can budget, yeah. prepare and plan. So it Just really enables employees. I imagine <coughs> the other real benefit is having that really detailed live site mm -hmm. readily available probably also empowers payroll and HR staff because then actually you're taking the requests <coughs> or the demands of these jobs which actually which can be automated for a system empowers the employee to do it themselves and allows staff that used to deal with these requests to focus on the things that actually think that they need to be driving. It's a, it's a massive way for them to save time you know the, the administrative side of payroll as we know as a business, is, mm. is very laborious. Um, and to be able to reduce the amount of queries that you get in requests such as that is massively helpful. Yeah. Um, the great thing about real time as well for, for the employer's side is that there's no pay period cut off. Yeah. So you don't have that you know really big dash towards the end of the month where you're yeah. trying to kind of collate and consolidate all of that information. Um, <clears throat> what it creates instead is a consistent flow of work where you can just keep an eye on it if you like avoiding those ebbs and flows to really really kind of saving time there um what it also does is uh also track people cost in real time so you can move from kind of reactive planning mm. off you know, kind of your end of month planning to proactive planning of yeah. okay so from this we can we can forecast that we're going to be at this point by the end of the month are there any actions that we need to take to, to better manage that and that sort of thing? Because, <clears throat> as we know, payroll is a busy, busy, busy thing. Um, and it's oftentimes thankless work, yeah. uh, we have to say. So anything that we can do to support that process, to make it easier, and ultimately be able to give a better service to our employees, to our teams, um, the better. And this is a great example of that. The second one that we've got then, <coughs> which is um, 
a bit more geared to probably towards the employee than the employer, but but absolute benefits nevertheless is um, earned wage access. Right. Um, so, so sorry, a question then about that. You, mm-hmm. Everything you've just talked about now then with real-time payroll, mm-hmm. that's about being able to very quickly, easily forecast what you're getting. Yes. And it's a site, it's a view of that. Yes. But it isn't access to that at that stage. It isn't, it's no. It's just as you're building mm-hmm. it, you can report it lively, uh, lively live, and, and, and see all that or lively, information. lively, if you want. It can be lively, depends how you pr- report it. Mm-hmm. With a depends song. how much you've been paid. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so the difference being, you're, you're exactly right. So the difference with earned wage access is that's taking that one step further by also allowing you early access to that pay. Right. So um, there are a few companies that offer this. So we partner with a company where we yeah. offer this to, to, to our customers. Yep. Um, and what this effectively does is one to two times a month, you can take effectively a, a money drawdown okay. from your earned wage up until that point. Okay. So something to make absolutely clear, it isn't access to your full wage. It's yeah. only access to what you've earned up until up that, that point. point. So it's very much like a pay-as-you-go model. Yeah, and it's, it's a great way um, to kind of avoid those kind of payday loan setups that can yeah. sometimes be a little bit ominous, a bit tenuous. But it empowers your your employees to take more kind of financial control of their income as and when. So exactly. if life throws you a curveball or something happens and you're not prepared or you really desperately need to plan for mm. something else, you can enable some input without putting yourself into a precarious situation like taking a loan or doing something that you probably shouldn't. Exactly. So the, so exactly. the business can empower you that way. Yeah, and I mean... A, a a big thing that we can reference when it comes to that right now as well is, you know, in- inflation of interest rates, l- loans are becoming kind of less and less attractive, whereas this is an option whereby you're sticking within your own budget, within yeah. your own boundaries. And again, it's, as you say, it's that empowerment and that kind of financial control um, that earn wage access can offer. Okay. Um, and what it's it's also a great education tool as well, because it can help you to understand how your money is accrued throughout the month. And again, just like I mentioned with real time payroll, it will also help you understand um, how your taxing works, how your salary sacrifice works, yeah. um, and it also gives you a chance to have a look at the impact that any. Uh, overtime or expenses is created onto your um, end wage as well. In terms of what it can offer for an employer, um, this is where actually it becomes much more of an attractive offering for, for, for businesses as well. So we've spoken a lot about how employees can benefit from having that better financial control, yeah. um, feeling more secure in what they earn and that reassurance that they have that pot there available should they need to use it to yeah. say if there's a, a rogue bill or something or, um, or if someone clips their wing mirror off your car. Um, but actually, there's a lot that an employer can gain from it as well. So there's some really good kind of stats and statistics in here that I wanted to run through. So the first thing that we've got is improved retention. Um, so Employees are more likely to feel positive about you as an employer and stay with the business should you offer uh, a kind of a perk or a benefit such as this. Okay. Um, and a report that was completed by WageStream, who are an earned wage access provider, say that they have seen a 16% reduction in staff turnover in one of their most recent surveys. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, it also creates an easier recruitment process um, as an attractive offer. Businesses are more likely to fill vacancies um, when having earned wage access as part of their benefits package. Um, and finally, and I think this one is is a really, really important one to touch on, is increased productivity. So um, the report that was done by Waystream says that there was an 11% increase in hours worked as earned wage access. Because it worked as a motivator for teams. Yeah, especially if you're in an organization where you can basically look, look, I can work as much as little as I need to or want to, Mm. or I can take on extra shifts, I can take on extra responsibility. When you're seeing that live, 
with the real-time payroll element as well. And then you know you can access it. Say, again, life throws you that curveball and someone drives into your car and knocks off a wing mirror. You're like, I'm going to need to pay that off, but I can't afford that normally. Yeah. I am going to do an extra thing here and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to use that. No, That's a exactly, great motivator, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. And it also, um, and a point that I haven't put on here, but I think a big point to raise as well, is that it also creates a significant reduction in absenteeism. Yeah. So big thing of what we were talking about last week. Yeah. Earned wage access is a great way of better managing that because employees have much more transparent access to what they're earning. Yeah. This is especially applicable to those who are on kind of smaller hour contracts and they get paid as they work. Yeah. Um, it reduces that risk of them taking, and I'll phrase this nicely, unnecessary time off. And so that, that absenteeism becomes less of an issue. So for HR and payroll teams, that becomes less of a frustration to try and manage as well. Um, so a massive, massive benefit for, nice. for employers in that sense. Okay. So that's just a little roundup of a couple of examples of what businesses can do and what they can offer to their teams to improve collaboration, improve productivity, uh, but more importantly, improve financial well-being and empower their teams um, to take control of their finances. So that leads us nicely then to wrapping up to the, you know, our key topic. It is National Payroll Week then. It is. So celebrating all that, hopefully you've learned a bit more about uh, the different types of payroll, the f where the future of payroll is going. Again, if you want to hear more, there are, there are brochures that, and there's a lot of research that you've mentioned today, Emma, mm -hmm. that is on the MHR uh, website. So do look it out, look for it. It's very good. It's got all the stats that you've mentioned today. Um, there is an MHR Payroll Summit. There is. There is. So all week next week, uh, we will be hosting our MHR Payroll Summit, uh, where we will have webinars, we'll have lots of great content going out onto the website. You can still register for that at the moment. Um, so if you visit our website, www.mhrglobal.com, uh, it will take you straight to the registration page and yeah. you can check it out. There's going to be lots of great things on there. Yeah. So anything you've d we've heard about today or more is all on there. It's worth having a look at. Um, yeah, check it out. Assistant to the producer, Tom, has asked me to clarify that that is the 4th to the 8th of September. There you go. Just in case this airs at the wrong time. We land a bit sooner, so we're giving <laughs> a bit of a preview. Well done. So we've got our producer segment. Mm -hmm. Tom has just landed an email into our inboxes. Thank you, you assistant to the producer, Tom. National Payroll Week themed. Oh. So Tom has said... Getting paid is a great feeling, and there's no feeling quite like your first pay packet. Do you remember yours? I do, actually. Yeah, I, I do, actually. It was a little brown envelope. Yeah, I got, I got rid of mine very quickly on something like sweets or something. Oh. But he Child. said here, it's probably been eons since your first jobs paid you. Not okay. Oh, that's rude. Yeah, um, but let's go through some of the internet's weird and wonderful ways that they've spent their money after their first payday. Ooh. Okay, so we'll, okay. It's, it's a very long list, so we'll, 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 we'll go through it, it right? Quick Hopefully, fire. this is something similar to what people listening have bought. So, mm -hmm. first payday packet, drum roll, please. First one is a teal KitchenAid mixer, mm. a pair of pinstriped conductor Levi's, heaps of makeup, a Wii U dated. Beats headphones. Yeah, uh, a crepe pan and a Crusade Dutch oven. Love that. What was your first job? Mm. Yeah. A mattress. Essential. Uh, Arsenal tickets. Not essential. A beautiful white cashmere cardigan. Not essential. Very essential. Um, a PS2. What year was this? It, mine. A <laughs> treadmill. Um, a ro a rotaring technical <laughs> pen. I don't know. Driving lessons. It's not a euphemism, I hope. <laughs> yeah. A purple iPod Nano. <laughs> purple, important. Uh, a gallon of Arizona green tea. And my personal favourite, a Greg's. Hopefully a sausage roll and not two people. No, I quite like <laughs> the vegan sausage roll, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, signed off here, stay funny, get money, Tom. Lovely. Your yeah. avid National Payroll Week celebrator. Mm. Well, I'll let him off with the signature Fair on that enough. one. Actually, that's fine. Good. Well, we'd love to hear your suggestions. You can always find us on the Facebook group. You can always find us on mhrglobal.com. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and let us know what did you buy with your first pay packet. And make sure you join us for our National Pay Week celebrations and head to our website.
I think you just rounded it all off lovely there. All right, then. Well, we'll see all you right. at National Payroll Week in a bit. We'll see you there. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.